Now there are new questions about the knife sheath and where it was sent to be tested. My next guest has new information on that. Joining us now is journalist and best-selling author Howard Bloom, uh, who has worked for the New York Times and Vanity Fair. He is currently writing a book about Brian Koberger and covering the case uh, for Air Mail News. Thank you so much for coming on, Howard. I'm a big fan of, of your recent articles on the case. Appreciate you taking the time tonight. I want to talk about the testing uh, of this knife sheath uh, and what you have learned about it. Well, as you pointed out earlier, the police were all along moving forward, even though we in the media, the public didn't know what was happening. And they were focusing on Brian Koberger, they, but they couldn't completely make the case so they could issue an arrest warrant. What they did is they had the knife sheath and they had on the button of the knife sheath, they had touch DNA and they had no, no way to tie that to Koberger. And the Idaho lab came up with this idea of using a separate lab in Texas. This lab had specialized in proprietary devices that made what is called kinship DNA. Uh, you, you could figure out a relative of the, of the DNA that you already had. And they, this lab was set up to investigate unsolved murders. It was backed by some Silicon Valley venture capitalists. It was a never before used in, an, in a present case, just at, only in cold cases. So, so, so let me just interrupt you. But, sorry to interrupt you, but you're saying this lab that they sent the knife sheath to has never been used before except in cold cases? Yes, this was the first time they were willing to take a chance. They wanted desperately to make an arrest. They wanted desperately to tie the suspect to this knife sheath. So meanwhile, in Pennsylvania, they gathered, they had that midnight garbage run. Right. They picked up garbage that was the father's DNA. They could then send that to the lab, tie it to the knife sheath, and they could make this kinship. And now they could say within, you know, 0.99, 0.9% positive. Right. I, I just want to zero in, um, Howard, on this Texas lab, because this is new information that you've reported that I didn't know until you, you reported it. When you say never before done... Uh, technology that they're using, you know, that it's only been used on cold cases. I mean, couldn't this be an issue for the prosecution? This seems like something the defense could really zero in on. Why did the knife sheath get sent to this lab that has never done this kind of work I, I, I don't before? think so. I actually think it will reinforce uh, the prosecution's case. This lab is very respectable. Their cases, their evidence has been, their the methodology has been held up in court time after time, and I think this reinforces the prosecution's case. I, I, I don't think it will be, it's not a positive for Koberger. Let me ask you, because we did a story at the Idaho Crime Lab, it looked very advanced. It was our understanding at the time that they were the ones doing all of the testing. Um, why would they need to send it to Texas? They did not have the, the DNA that could prove kinship, the relationship. And only this lab in Texas had this proprietary uh, mechanism to do this. In fact, way before uh, the, the Koberger the case, the state of Idaho had made a, signed a contract with this lab in case something came up in a cold case to use this lab's facilities. And now they came up with the idea, I don't know whose idea it was in Idaho, but let's send it to this lab to get what we needed. Therefore, they had the garbage run in Pennsylvania uh, where the state police in Pennsylvania were able to get DNA from Koberger's father. They were able to tie that to the lab and to the knife sheath, and that's how they, they solved uh, to the, their best belief that Koberger is a suspect. Interesting. Yeah. Well, listen, Howard, we appreciate you coming on. You're, you're the one who broke this information. We didn't even know that Texas was involved. Um, so thank you for coming on tonight and explaining what you learned. Appreciate talking to you, and I've loved your reporting, too, on the case. Oh, thanks so much. I appreciate that. We'll be in touch. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.